Hello everyone, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access, where I'm going to examine how much wing we need for our airplanes, and also continue to explore the changes that were made to Kerbal Space Program 2 in the latest update, we're in 0.1.5.0, and some of the changes were to the atmosphere, so flying airplanes will help us gauge that a little bit. For reference, uh, this is the Steam install, and since it uh, came up in the comments last time, I should mention that I am on high settings all the way through, except for anti-aliasing, which is low, uh, because I think that the high anti-aliasing had a high impact initially, maybe on the initial release it might have been better now, but uh, it didn't do much benefit, so I'm leaving it low for now. I also start a clean save with every patch, so we have a testing patch 5 thing here, and so let us load. So this is sort of dovetailing on my video for Realism Overhaul. I'm doing a set of Realism Overhaul tutorials for KSP1, and there I explain how to use Fermi Aerospace Research in order to figure out how much wing we need. But in stock, it's actually a little bit harder to figure out how much wing you absolutely need. And so we're going to start off with a Mark II plane, just like I did in that video, and see, first of all, whether we can maybe take off without any wing at all. Uh, we will need control surfaces, but we are not going to put any wing on this. And I'll actually configure it exactly the way I had that vehicle in that video. So we'll have a fuel tank in front, cargo bay in the middle, and then the bicoupler fuel tank in the back. There is there enough body lift here to actually take off, given that we're going to have, uh, let's say, uh, canards, and we'll need some sort of roll control. So we'll see, maybe uh, canards in front and back but no main wings, something like that. Well, when I say in back, the horizontal stabilizers, something like that, and we'll see if that's enough. And we're not gonna go crazy. Now, there's, uh, these are methane and oxidizer tanks, and that's because I was testing with a rocket plane in Realism Overhaul, so uh, we'll, we'll try a rocket plane here, too. 2.375 tons, just for the heck of it. I'm going to have engines that are about the same mass. So we're going to put two uh, two swivels that are a little bit heavy. We don't really need their gimbling. Uh, well, we might need their gimbling the way I'm doing things, but let's put two Reliance. And so the center mass should be right in the middle here. Thereabouts. So as the fuel drains, it shouldn't change too much. And then we will take a look at the center of pressure, and we will have... A minimal amount of all moving control surfaces. So, I, I think I will just go with all moving and I'm not gonna change them. So, we're going to have them just the default for reference. So, the small ones just as they are, and we'll have one on the top as our. Uh, let's have a stabilizer stabilizer for our vertical stabilizer. Uh, maybe I'll have a medium. So again, I haven't changed the size of them. The medium's a bit big. <laughs> I'll tuck it in a little bit. Uh, the center of lift is like that, but we have to put the landing gear on too, so maybe I'll shift these back a bit. Not a great place to put the landing gear though. We don't have wings to tuck them underneath, so this is going to be a bit wiggly. So that's pretty crazy. It's not even jet engines. Or you guys just gonna use rocket engines and see how it goes. What do you think? Uh, will this work out for us? Let's make sure. No, uh, that's not what I want. I want to make sure that these are not doing yaw, but we'll let them do roll and pitch. And same here. And the vertical stabilizer can just do yaw. Okay. Minimal plane. Okay, so clouds. I don't know, the clouds are the clouds. I mean, let's be frank. Uh, the clouds were not the problem I was having with KSB2 anyway. I, I like the clouds to begin with. So any atmospheric effects are not high on my priority list as far as changes that I would like to see made. Uh, now... As far as the comments to the previous video are concerned, if it's a concrete suggestion, you know, I think that's helpful. This is an early access game, and, you know, I'm trying to give suggestions, and hopefully 
uh, everybody else is trying to make good faith suggestions, but there were some comments I'm not going to touch. Uh, they're just trying to rile things up and be uh, defeatist about the whole thing, and that that's not what I'm trying to do here. I don't think we need full thrust. That should be more than enough. So... Well, okay, we're not getting that much lift. <laughs> uh, maybe we should wait a bit first. Okay. Oh, 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 don't be like that. The brakes are a little bit strong on the nose, I guess? I don't know. Um... Come on, save Valentina. Uh, this isn't going very well. <laughs> ah! Yeah, it has a ten tendency to nose down when using the brakes. Okay, let's uh, let's revert to launch. I think we can try that again. It's certainly rotated. That's a problem with using the keyboard for control. If I uh, as far as a wish list is concerned, I would like to be able to use my joystick at some point. Okay, yeah, we really didn't need that much thrust. Oh, we're off. We, we didn't even need 100 meters per second. Uh, SAS's control in this situation is wobbly. But, you know, I can't can't say it's bad for having that flaw. Whoa, we're spinning out. Oh no. We do have a certain lack of control. Uh, oh no! Uh, uh, oh no! Deviating from prograde a lot is not a survival thing for this. Up, uh, up, uh, up. Uh, uh, well, it could be worse. I don't know if there's just a methane bicoupler thing. No, there isn't. Well, we'll just figure it out. Maybe we can just use one jet engine. We'll have the whiplash. We need the mass in the back anyway. And we'll have the air intakes in the back too. I like these, so I'll just have two of these. Let's have just the front ones doing pitch and the back ones doing roll. I didn't feel like we needed all that much pitch authority anyway. Seem, we seem to be doing pretty good on that. Roll would be better if these were closer to the center line. Now, just a reminder, these little uh, control surfaces, they're 0 0.13 tons. So actually, they're heavier than the medium stabilizer. Hmm. Well, that's not good, is it? Maybe instead of these, because we want as light as possible, of course, that's the main goal here. The light wing, and I'm just taking it by the default size. Of course, we could resize it and sort of cheat it like that, too. Let me just reconsider those and instead use these stabilizers, though the, the adjustable fin would be even better. But yeah, what if we just use stabilizers and default size, no, no changes. Front pitch and back ones roll. It'd be better if, again, those are central line instead of in the back for roll. We could dump the mob propellants in here. We don't need that. Let's see. Minimal plane two. I'll also try with the Mark III parts soon. Now the Whiplash does have some thrust vectoring, I believe. So, we could use that to our advantage. The vertical stabilizer is admittedly a little bit big. Maybe we can make uh, use the small ones for that too. 
yeah, lots of thrust vectoring. Uh, these uh, these stabilizers don't have the same pitch control as the old all moving control surfaces did, but we did get off the ground. And since these aren't all moving control surfaces, they handle a little bit better than the all moving control surfaces did. Generally, you do want a stable part to the to the aerodynamic surfaces. In certain flight regimes, all moving control surfaces can be unstable. I sort of reminded myself of that fact during the realism overhaul tutorial as I had used all moving control surfaces for the vertical stabilizers and that caused a problem even though the craft that I had made was nominally nominally balanced. So how fast can this go actually? I mean we don't have a lot of drag right? There's no huge wing. Very shark-like. This is sort of like a shark, I feel. Shark planes are possible. Okay, it can break the speed of sound now, I think. I think I'm gonna have to lose out a little bit to make it happen, but... Uh, well, that's pretty decisive. Recline, though? So partly there's just my curiosity as to how little wing I can get away with around here. Of course we sort of examined that with the Sakura, but the Sakura circumnavigation plane had a lot of drag because of the two huge turbofan engines. Uh, in this case we are in minimal drag and seeing how much wing we can get away with. And now we're really accelerating. Also this is just taking a look at the atmosphere and seeing how it is. Well, we are past Mach 3 at 10 kilometers. I should probably be turning back soon though. But th there might be a runway... Maybe I should just land somewhere instead of trying to get back home. I mean, we've demonstrated the flight thing. I don't like how the clouds are here though. I mean, they're casting shadows and sometimes that doesn't... I don't know, it's very gray. Clouds in space are super white. Because they're reflecting a lot of light. I don't know why they're so gray here. Okay, well, we're losing air here. I will try to make a controlled U-turn before landing just to see how it goes. Probably people have tried this already, I'm not bringing anything new in that respect, it's just for my own curiosity since I hadn't tried it. Again, primarily an experimental channel over here. You can also verify test results. Well, that should be just about Mach 4. Sort of topping out there now. We've got to try a nice big U-turn and land somewhere over here. Then maybe we'll also double back at slower speeds to see how it turns. Uh, especially below Mach 1. It loses a lot of speed trying to turn. Because there isn't enough wing trying to push the air. We're just sort of going against our current velocity. Part of this is the thrust vectoring of the whiplash engine, too. I'm just maxing out my pitch here and pulling up as much as possible while turning. After all, we've got these tiny pitch controls. On the bright side, that means that we don't get into too much trouble with them. So now we'll, we'll be testing it without the engine thrust vectoring very much because we are at zero thrust. 
So we'll just be examining how it handles with these control surfaces for a little bit. Well, pulling up as much as I can here, it's not pulling up very easily with zero thrust. But we're also really slow right now. Yeah, I probably need some engine thrust. So with the thrust vectoring at this level, we can pull up. But without it, it was very difficult to pull up. And we probably would have crashed there. Now, there's a very bumpy desert. And we have a very high landing speed because this is a uh, lacking wing. But we are sort of short of fuel right now. Ooh, we lost speed quite quickly when we dumped... Uh, we dropped the landing gear, so that's interesting. Gotta try and turn along the dunes instead of across the dunes. It's still pretty bumpy like this. But we're running out of fuel. Oh, okay, well, not great. So that's one downside to not having much wing. Landing. Oh, this is all like deep crevices. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh. Oh. Oh, there was a thunk there too. Okay. Ah, oh, poor Valentina. So, yes, that's a flaw. So, next thing we want to do is make a plane that actually can land safely, and we should probably land at the runway too. But, this could take off and control itself, which is something. But, it did use the Whiplash's thrust vectoring, so that's a little bit cheaty. Oh, we are inside. We're inside the Whiplash. Okay, so, we could turn off gimbling. And we could test it like that, but let's try the Mark III cockpit and Mark III body and see what we can do. It's much more daunting, right? Surely we can't use just a small amount of wing. And uh, quickly, let me just check what the mass situation is. So, uh, we've got 5.51 now. I'm going to scale this up to a much larger wingspan, root length. Uh, tip length and say tip angle. Uh, well, that's a tip angle though. Wing angle. Okay, it's a huge wing now. See, it says it's a huge wing. Mass did not change. So, but the aerodynamic shear did. So, for instance, now we see that the center of lift is back there. And I think it will get a commensurate amount of lift compared to its surface area. It's just that it's not getting enough mass. So, that's that's one thing on my looking to see them fix list. So um, nose cone. Well, I need something with three nodes. Um, Multi-engine mount. Okay. Uh, how do I change the nodes on it? Okay, I guess it's not that kind of engine mount. Shouldn't it let us mount many things to it? <laughs> I don't know how the multi-engine mount works. Okay, fine. I mean, there's these engine mounts, of course. I guess I could just use a set of four. We are going to disable gimbling on these this time. Let's just start with the small stabilizers. I mean, of course we can size them up and they would actually work and have enough, but I'm, I'm just seeing the minimal. So, uh, the ones in the on the center line will do roll, these. The other sets will do pitch. I don't think this is going to work, but we might as well try it. Okay. Ludicrous plane. All right. You might want to underfuel it though. 
Okay, uh, we'll need the suspension to be less <laughs> if we're ever gonna be able to time warp. Tamper strength might be okay. And it is daylight. Here we go. Now the gimbling is locked on these. Valentina is once again our test subject. I'm pulling up as hard as I can. Oh, there you go. We can lift off. Uh, well, it's coming back down though, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. 200 meters per second. I don't think this is going to land safely. I think we broke those. They're not retracting. I guess we'll just leave the landing gear out now. Well, let's stay above 200. I really wish I could dump fuel. We probably would do better if we had less fuel. It used to be the landing gear would just break the plane automatically at 150 meters per second, so maybe that's an improvement, or maybe it'll still do that when I least expect it. Since this turns like, like a flying brick, um, we'll just come in from the opposite direction instead of trying anything fancier. They said the shuttle was a flying brick. No, this is a flying brick. Okay, see, I can see the runways, okay. Uh, the chase view is a little bit disorienting right now. Uh, it's wobbly. Okay, we'll need to land faster. Oh no. Uh, I'm in the middle. <laughs> on plane we'll need as much room to land as it is with our speed. I say plane loosely here. Oh, okay, oh. Okay, I'm just gonna land on the grass. I can't do anything about it. Turning is not this thing's strong suit. Oh no! Ah. At least save Val. Oh no! Ah. I just, uh, it's, it's really tough to turn that thing, and uh, that chase view wasn't helping in that respect. But with a little bit of practice, I think I can land this safely uh, at 200 meters per second. I don't know if the landing gear is actually safe at that point. After all, it doesn't say that it is. Uh, 150 meters per second only impact tolerance, so probably not. Uh, air brakes. Maybe a little bit more wing would be a good idea, but we can take off with this, is the point. Also, if we underfueled it, because we sure didn't need all that propellant, we could probably do a better job. So maybe, maybe I should try that. Let's say five tons of total methane. Let's see how that goes. Okay, here we go again. We're accelerating, accelerating pretty well, so maybe we don't need so many engines. I, uh, the main wheels get broken. So might as well leave the Ford one out as well. We gotta try and come in from that side. Island runway would be a challenge. At this speed, I don't think this would be able to land safely there. Since we're lighter, it's a little bit better off, but <laughs> it's not that great. And still above that 150. But, you know, maybe it's 150 going straight down that I was talking about. 
Not going straight down. Well, if I crawl down that much, we might be going straight down, though. Gently, gently. Okay, cut. Breaks, breaks. Of course, the tendency for this to roll over is high, right? Because it's all the wheels are very close to the center line. Aha! Successful flight with the whatever this is, the ludicrous plane. So there you have it. Perfectly wonderful plane. No problems at all. Uh, Valentina survived this time. And we just have the default sized small uh, stabilizers, the transforms here. God only knows about the lift drag ratio. Anyway, uh, yep, just a whole bunch of these little small stabilizers, these transforms. And we could fly. I did turn off the gimbling on these, so they weren't helping. And I think with that, I'll leave it here. So, best plane in case we do not. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.